Being a human is pretty great. We can run, we can swim, we even have opposable thumbs so we can open jars. The list goes on. One thing we can't do though is fly, although we can increase our trajectory like when long distance jumpers get really far distances. I want to figure out the ultimate way to get really far. I've got a few ideas and I have a crash test dummy to try it out on. Dummy? Who are you calling a dummy? I'm Paige. Wonder Paige. That's, that's Wonder Paige right there. Nice to meet you. All right, so we need to know more about flight and what makes flight work. It's pretty common knowledge that birds can fly, and why? Not just because of the wings, but because a combination of forces that help it fly and maintain height. There's weight, lift, drag, and thrust. And it's a balance of all four of those that helps it fly. Weight is a force that pushes down. That comes from gravity. In physics, we use arrows to show vectors. A vector is something that's big and moves in a particular direction. Lift is the force that you need to get weight up off the ground. When these forces are equal, you can maintain your height. But there's more forces. Drag affects every single thing that flies. And this is the force of air pushing against the thing that's flying. That has to be equal if you want to maintain your flying to your thrust, which comes from this way. So all four forces are kind of in a tug of war. And if a bird wants to fly, these all have to be approximately equal. A bird doesn't just stand still and fly though. It needs extra energy to help it take off. Some birds do this by jumping off something. Some birds do it by running up. So this is where the wings come into it. That's right. The shape of the wings help the bird get some air. Lindsay will explain a bit more about that later on on Get Clever. And these guys have got a lot to do with it. We are at the foam pit. I'm here with my friend Super Page. Wonder Page. Wonder Page. And we are going to get to the bottom of this long jump business. We're going to try a few different techniques and see how far we can go. First, I figure we need to see how far you can go just standing. Good call. It'll help. Ah! Thank you. Sir. So this will be our control. It looks like Wonder Page got about 200 centimeters. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. Up next on Get Clever, we try and use various jumping techniques and see if we can improve that distance. Hi, my name's Jen. I'm a helicopter pilot here in the Northern Territory. So this one is the on and off switch. It's very simple. Uh, this one is our height above sea level. Uh, this indicator here is our vertical speed. So if we're climbing or if we're descending, so it will tell us. And this one here is our airspeed indicator. So how fast we're going. So we have three different controls in a helicopter. We have the little feet pedals, which control our tail rotor. We have this one in our right hand, which is called the cyclic, which controls all of our turning. So if we want to turn left or right, or forward or backwards. And then we have one down here on the left, uh, which is our collective. So basically, if we want to go up, we pull it up. If we want to go down, we squeeze it down. It's got a bit Yankees airborne. So lots of crocodiles in this creek. But I decided to become a pilot because I absolutely love flying. I really love aeroplanes, but helicopters are just so much cooler. You can just land absolutely everywhere. If we wanted to, we could go and land on the beach. We can land on tiny little pontoons in the middle of the ocean. Um, I love that you, with a helicopter, you can go and do whatever you like, wherever you like. When we're up in the sky, we do get a little bit of turbulence in a helicopter, but not as much as a plane. And basically, because we don't have the big wings like a plane, um, we don't feel it as much on the inside. Basically, turbulence is just us popping in and out of the different air currents as we fly along. 
G-force is when you feel that funny feeling in your tummy when you go over the top of a roller coaster and it feels like it's going into your throat or when you come down the bottom of a roller coaster and it feels like it's in the bottom of your tummy. So because the helicopter is very nice and smooth, we don't get any G-forces in a helicopter. We don't ever get nervous up here because we train and we train and we train for every tiny little thing that could possibly go wrong. So we're pretty confident in the sky. Generally the best bit about being a helicopter is that we can stay pretty close to the ground so we get a really good look at everything. So at the moment we're only a thousand feet, so we do everything in feet, not meters. Um, so at the moment we're a thousand feet, but we go all the way down to 500 feet. It's about 180 meters. Normally in this helicopter we fly with the doors on, uh, but today because we're doing a very special job and we have a cameraman, we can open the door all the way back and so it latches and then he can get all of his photos out the door. So it's very safe, the door is locked back. Sometimes helicopters have to perform special jobs like search and rescue or rounding up horses and cattle and so that they can fly really close to the ground so they can chase all of the cows around and uh, if they're looking for someone out in the ocean that they can go as low as they like to find that person. So you don't have to be very clever to be a pilot but you do have to study and study and study. So basically our landing is exactly the same as an escalator. We just come all the way down at the same angle all the way down into our spot. And we slow down as we come down so that we're in a nice little hover wherever we want to land. Yankees on the ground. Now that we're on the ground we just have to wait 30 seconds for the engine to cool down and all we have to do is turn off our headsets and our radios and then we've got a very simple little engine switch but we just have to turn the engine to off. The very last thing we have to do is we have to stop the blades from spinning so we've got a special little rotor brake here that just slows them right down. So we just pull it on until the blades stop and then it's safe for everybody to get out. So that's how you fly a helicopter. I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, let's check out how the professionals do it. You can see small differences in the way they hold their bodies. The angles, the shapes they do with their arms and legs actually directs how they move. Up or down, spinning or even staying stationary. Kind of like, you know, dancing in the sky. Previously on Get Clever, we learned how to fly a plane. Just kidding, but we did learn the basics of how it gets up off the ground. We want to use that same logic to help improve Paige, Wonder Paige's, distance and height in her long jump. Last time she got pretty far, let's see if we can improve that. One of the most important techniques for getting a long jump right is to focus on the penultimate step before you jump, which is the second last step before they go for takeoff. If a long jumper gets this step wrong, they could be done for. So why is the second last step so important? I mean, shouldn't the last step be the important one? Well, it's actually all about steering your trajectory so that when you take that final step, you're jumping in the right way. Otherwise, you can be out of luck. Wow, there's a lot to think about to nail a good jump. All right, let's do it. Now, one of the most important things in the pen ultimate step is the position that you take off from. You want to be perpendicular or at right angles to the ground. If you're leaning too far forward, that means your knee's gonna come up and hit yourself in the chest, you'll break your stride, you don't want that. If you're leaning too far backwards, <laughs> that's definitely too far it's backwards, too far. then you won't get the momentum you need. Another thing that's important is lowering your center of gravity. This is so your hips go straight that way, but you don't want to lose any speed. The final thing is, when you land, you want your foot to go flat, 
If you go heel first, your hips can go out of whack, and again, you fling. True. You ready to give it a try? Oh, yeah. Okay, Paige, ready? Yep. Set, go. Two hundred and eighty centimeters. That is Ooh. definitely better than last time. Up next on Get Clever, we see if we can use a super suit to improve Wonder Page's jump. Ooh. If you haven't already noticed, this is an indoor skydiving center where people come and train and even compete indoors. It's a huge wind tunnel with a massive fan at the bottom that actually generates enough gust of wind to lift you up into the air. They actually use wind tunnels to study how birds, bats, and even bees fly. It enables us to make better planes and drones. Don't you just love watching birds soar through the air? Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to fly like a bird? Well, unfortunately, we don't have any wings. Or any of these guys, feathers. Remember how Nate showed us how birds take off? Well, we're going to learn about how birds stay in the sky. And these guys have got a lot to do with it. Feathers are one of the most high-tech materials in nature. Feathers are scrunchable, lightweight, waterproof and warm. And they create a strong, flat surface for birds to fly with. So how do feathers work? I mean, they're not solid. You've probably taken one and pulled it apart like this before. It's weird. I mean, an aeroplane's wings are flat and hard and a bat's wing is all that solid skin. So how do feathers work? The structure of a feather is really special. They have a main vein and then coming off that, things called barbs. And then if you take an even closer look with these magnifying glasses, you can see even smaller structures that crisscross in between the barbs called barbules. And these have little hooks on them and they stick the barbs together just like this. <laughs> it's this crisscrossing that makes the feathers such a strong, lightweight material. It's genius. We know this because if you look at a feather that's not used for flying, like this lyrebird tail feather, you can see all these lovely barbs, but no little crisscrossing barbules. So our bird is up in the sky and it's got some serious lift going on. Now birds don't just flap their wings up and down. They actually move their wings in a figure of eight pattern like this. And that gives the bird the thrust it needs to move forward and up at the same time. At the back of their body, birds have got tail feathers like this. These help the birds change directions, also help stabilise them in the air. They work a bit like a rudder in a boat. So as you can imagine, flying uses a lot of energy. So birds have come up with ways to save energy. One of the best ways is to use updrafts. Now, if you can imagine this box is a building and this piece of paper is my bird and this fan is some wind. But on windy days, birds can cheat. Wind doesn't always go in one direction and when it hits things like this building, it gets bent up. So my bird can use this to glide on, doesn't even have to flap its wings. Cool, huh? But birds aren't just good at staying up in the air, they're also really good at getting back down to earth in a hurry, especially when they're hungry. Birds of prey do this by pulling in their wings and diving. And those wing feathers come in handy when they need to pull up fast and break to snatch their dinner. Previously on Get Clever, we became the first human to fly. I'm just kidding again. But we did learn the basics of how to get up off the ground. Applying those same principles, we want to help Wonder Page achieve a longer long jump. We've already tried no run-up, and we've tried a run-up where she focuses on the penultimate step, which is the second last step before they go for takeoff. 
We want to achieve a really great jump this time though, so we're going to try and build a super long jump suit. Okay, our first jump we got 2 meters, the second jump we got 2.8 meters, and now we have a new look which is the streamlined look. Now the reason professional athletes get streamlined is they want to have an aerodynamic sail through the air. This is to reduce drag like we talked about on the top of the bird. That's why cyclists have the pointy end to the back of their very light helmets. You might think it's not that big a deal, but every second matters to a professional athlete. How do you feel in your streamlined gear? I'm feeling very compressed and very streamlined, and I'm ready to fly through the sky like a salmon, fish, bird. Uh, are you sure we need the goggles? But the goggles make it. Yep, yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> One to page away. All right, ready, Paige? Ready. Ready, set, go. Whee! Ooh, it looks good. Uh, 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 350 centimeters. Ow! It looks like our aerodynamic suit may have made a huge difference. Next up on Get Clever, we're gonna see if we can try even more techniques and see if we can get Wonder Page flying like a real bird. Whew, I think I'm starting to see why humans don't fly. It's actually a little thing called aerophobia, which is the fear of flying, which I have. Yep, I always get up in the air and go, I shouldn't be up here. I should be back on the ground. Okay, so we've tried the streamlined suit, we've tried a regular jump, and we've tried getting a run up and jump. It looks like now we're gonna try some wings. I'm not convinced this is gonna work. Birds can fly for a variety of reasons. For one, they're very light. A lot of them even have hollow bones. For two, their wings are in proportion to their body shape. For example, if a human wanted to fly, you're gonna need wings that are three times your height. Oof. What do you think, Paige? You think it's gonna work? I think it is gonna work. Should we give it a go? Oh, I win. Okay, let's go Wonder Page. Do -do -do. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> So, as suspected, the wings didn't help at all. In fact, we didn't even get as far as last time. Okay, so we had the standing jump, which was 200 centimeters. We had the running jump, which was 280 centimeters. Then we flew aerodynamically and got all the way to 350. Then there was the non-successful wings with 250. Yep. And now we have one final idea, which you're really excited about. Yep. Tell me what it is. Okay. So you know how a balloon goes really high up in the air and it can fly really far? Right. Let me go show you. You're going to be so excited. Okay. okay, but that's because of the helium. Paige. It's a balloon suit. It's like a giant balloon. Maybe that'll work. You want to go try? I do. Okay. In the name of science. Off you go, Wonder Page. That's... Well, she's definitely not flying, and it turns out, just like the wings, the suit is a bit of a drag, quite literally. Remember, the drag is a force that slows everything down and affects how far you can go. Was it awesome? Was it really far? Did I make it all the way? Huh. Nate, ah, uh, little help. Ah, little help here. I can't 